Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Samsung Z Flip 4. It's got an issue with blacking out. See if we can figure out what we need to do to fix it. Let's get into the video. All right, so I've got this Samsung Z Flip 4. Doesn't look like much is wrong with it. It does have a crack on the camera lens here. When I plug it in, we don't get any image on the front display. And on the back, we do get a charging symbol. If I move around the charge port, oh, and look, it just shut off. So that should stay lit. The charge port feels loose, but I get no life out of the middle. I have seen this come on it says, oh, there it goes. Now it says it's got 66% or 99%. So we'll go ahead and turn this on, or it was 66%. And we get the logo. And let's see. Okay. It says it's charging at 66%. 53 minutes until it completes the charge. If I unplug it, it immediately shuts off. So something's happening. Let's open this guy up and see what it needs. I'm just gonna take some isopropyl alcohol here on the border. These are easy enough to open without much issue. I've got a really thin piece of OCA protector here that I can slide in and cut through that border adhesive and it'll just slide down. Probably the first one in here, but I'm not sure. I have a sneaking suspicion that this is gonna be liquid damage inside the port. Took a look at it and there's a teeny bit of green corrosion on a couple of the pins, but it's very small, almost to where I couldn't see it unless I zoomed in under my microscope. So there's a chance that we've got some something going on here with the water damage. So I'm gonna slice right through it. I love these plastic sheets. Be careful around the this area for the display. And we'll go around the top. Carefully, carefully slice through the adhesive. Gently fold that out and slice through the remaining adhesive that's grabbing here. Okay, and there we've got the back off. Carefully pop out a little plastic clip here. They like to go flying across the room, so I'm gonna try not to let it go too far. Okay, we'll pop that off. Carefully disconnect the connector. Nice little crack in the camera lens, which has made that camera lens fairly dirty. If you haven't picked yourself up one of these, these camera lens cleaners, they really come in useful when you run into a situation like this. Let me show you what it looks like. So there's two sleeves in here, and inside each one of these sleeves, there's two more sleeves. Break away one of these guys, and now watch how cool this is. All I need to do is push this down, and it's nice and clean. Won't leave any residue but it'll pick up on the tip here all of the de debris. It can spread nicely down into the little gaps there. You can pop it away. So these are really handy for cleaning all sorts of little cameras and stuff like that. Let's see what we can find here in the top section. Go ahead and remove some of the screws and we'll probably need to open the bottom section as well. But for now, let's just pop off that bracket, disconnect the battery, carefully peel off the sticker here. I'll just leave it right there for now. Disconnect the display, disconnect this flex cable, and I'm gonna remove the motherboard from the top section. Okay, this last one here next to the camera will pop out this plastic piece. Don't wanna forget the SIM tray. Pop that out, disconnect the camera, and gently lift out the motherboard. I don't see any signs anywhere of liquid damage or corrosion. So we're probably gonna need to take a look under here. So using the same method, just gonna add some isopropyl alcohol along the border and we'll take the same plastic piece and gently push it in to one of the sides. And with any luck, I'll be able to start to slice in the adhesive. Let me add some more alcohol there. There, broke through. And then it's easy, smooth butter Cutting from here to slice around with this plastic piece. Push and slide, push and slide. Okay, all right. And if you do this just right, you can actually just reuse the adhesive. And as you can see, the adhesive on this is still fully intact. All right, and that 
should just come right off now. Some places it's still holding on. There we go, off comes that. All right, let's take out the screws and let's take a look and see if we've got any obvious reason for the display not to be working once we open this guy. All right, and we'll peel the wireless charger away and just connect the battery on this side. And let's take a look at this charge port, carefully pop him out and we'll disconnect this connector. Now looking everywhere, I don't, I don't really see much. So let's take the motherboard and the daughter board under the microscope and see if we can find anything. All right, first let's start by looking at the main motherboard here. And as I look around, I'm just looking for some signs of anything. Water damage, corrosion, burnt components, splitting of the motherboard, you name it, we're gonna look for it. There's nothing, nothing that I can see at all whatsoever. Okay. Let's take a look at the charge port. And there you can see the little bit of green corrosion that I'm talking about. It's potentially bridging between pins and causing some issues. So what we'll do is I don't see any other corrosion anywhere else. So let's thoroughly clean this and see if that makes any difference. Take some isopropyl alcohol and we'll drip it down in there. I'm gonna grab a toothbrush and I'm just gonna start scrubbing the crap out of it, literally. And this will remove the visible corrosion. That doesn't mean that uh, the pins under here on the daughter board are not corroded or, so corroded or something. The liquid could have potentially gone further. Okay, that's looking really good. Well, let's uh, spray this out real quick, dry it up. Okay, so there's no longer any really visible corrosion. There's a little speck right here, but that was not bridging anything together, but I'm just gonna clean it off again anyway. Okay, this side is really clean. This side, now that I've zoomed down in there even further, still has a little bit of connecting corrosion between pins, so I'm gonna scrape at that and really make sure that nothing potentially bridge anything here. And after a good scrubbing, that's looking a heck of a ton better. Let's go uh, plug this back in and see if that makes any difference. Cause it could be that we just weren't getting power to the batteries properly. So they weren't powering on the display. Hopefully it's that simple. All right, let's first start by installing the charge port. We'll connect up the display flex, carefully install it down into hit the frame. Put back the single screw that the charge port has at this point, we'll connect this guy up there. Let's install the motherboard. We'll push that on down, making sure none of these flex cables are in the way. There we go. Connect all of the flex cables back up. We'll connect up the rear display, and now we'll connect up the batteries. And let's see what happens this time when we plug in the charge port. All right, we get the charging symbol there. Anything on the main display. Oh, and look at that. It flashed on, which means it finally got power. Now we do still have the 66%. I wonder if we now try to power it on if the main display will come on. And there it is, we've got our display back. Completely blacked out display, all because of a corroded charge port. Now it did black out. Let's see if the back one's on. So the back one's on, it blacked out. It might think that I closed the, there we go, we get the front on, because I pushed the motherboard back into place. If I let the motherboard go up, it blacks out. If I push it back into place, it comes in into the magnetic field uh, of the magnet. There's a component that interacts with the motherboard. There's a component on the motherboard that interacts with a magnet, which tells the phone it's opened or closed. So if I push on the motherboard to the place it's supposed to be, the front display should come on. One, two, three. Boom. Cool. We now have a working phone. I just need to install everything. So let's do that real quick. Make sure everything works. And do we still have power if I unplug it is one of the questions. And look at that, we have no more short that automatically kills it, even the front display comes on. So I'm gonna turn this off real fast. We'll connect back up the external charging unit. We'll connect back up the wireless charging coil and we'll push down on the bracket with the loudspeaker. We'll put back the screws. There's a black one that goes right here. It's the only black one in the phone. And we'll install the bracket with its corresponding screws. Now we'll take our back. Still has a really sticky border. 
line that guy up and push it on down. Now we'll take our plastic bracket. This is what basically allows things to line up properly. If you're running into an issue where you have a blackout display and you say you've replaced the display and it's blacked out, it's the magnet up here, the big magnet with the little notch cut out of it, needs to be adjusted. Sometimes it's as simple as clearing out any adhesive that was holding it, the magnet on the new display down to the frame and uh, then reinstalling it with some type of liquid adhesive that can really thin out or uh, transferring the original magnet uh, from the old frame to the new frame. Those uh, are quick and easy solutions for blackout screen if it, was something, if it wasn't something like this where the charge port was causing uh, issues to arise with being able to actually charge the batteries and not cause things to short out. So almost there. It's always fun to fight the magnets with these screws, <laughs> just like that one. There we go. We'll reconnect the battery. We'll install the last two screws. Actually, before we do that, let's put this little black sticker back across all of those connectors. And now we can install the last two screws. And now we can connect up the back display panel. Carefully click that in. Take our white plastic clip and we'll snap it into place. And then we can install the back. At this point, it would have been a good idea to replace the lens, but it's not been requested. And let's see if we now want to turn on. And look at that, we've got our Samsung logo. This should not black out until we close it when it comes on. If it does, then that means we have to adjust the tightness of the screw up here at the top with the motherboard. It's on, okay. And it's allowing us to touch. Okay, now the back panel won't be on until we close this, so we should see it close. Back panel, something's happening with this display. It doesn't like being folded. Right there, it shorts out and shuts off. Let's see if we can, back panel's working, front panel's working, interesting. All right, let's close it one more time and see if it blacks out. Yeah, it blacks out. So let's open it back up and see if we can figure out what's going on with it. So one of the first things we're gonna try is a new charge port. I have a feeling that just because this is the only thing that I saw with any sort of damage on it, I wonder if something is still shorting out kind of internally here. Because we do have the display flex connecting to this, it could be that this is the reason we're getting a blackout when we go to close it on down. So. I'm gonna quickly install this real fast and we'll see if we have any change whatsoever. Connect up the display flex. Now we'll push it down into the frame. I'm gonna put back some securing screws here and now we'll connect up the other flexes here. Let's put back at least temporarily the loudspeaker. Now let's plug it in and see if we get an image on the front screen. We get the charging symbol on the back, but nothing on the front. We go ahead and try to turn it on. No image on the front, but we do get image on the back. All right, some things seem to be working, but let's see, if we open it up, nothing. All right, we're gonna check one more thing. I'm gonna take off the top again by carefully cutting through any of the adhesive that's still holding on. Pop off the little plastic bit again, disconnect the display. All right, so we're gonna try to see if uh, putting in some new batteries helps at all. I wonder if we're just not getting proper power from not having properly charged or something like that. All right, so get out this battery and we're also gonna connect up the second battery and hope that this can make some something of a difference. All right, so we've got both batteries connected and now we've got the display, the rear display connected. Let's go ahead and see if we can carefully power this guy on if we get any image. All right, so we do on the back, nothing on the front. Let me reconnect everything real quick. See if that changes anything. Okay, it. I think it registers that it's at least open because the back isn't on. If I close it, will it register? Nope. Let's plug it in and see if that makes any difference. Got the charging symbol. Okay, nothing. All right, I've reconnected everything. Let's see if that makes any difference when we go to power this guy on. No more logo, no logo on the front. Oh man. Oh wait, I saw something. All right, we got the front screen on and it's on right now. If I do any movement to close it. All right, so it seems to be working, except let's see if right now when I close it, still on, 
open it back up. Seems to be struggling quite a bit. So I'm going to try a trick that I used to use a lot and see if we can get it to come back. All right, so here's my little trick that we're trying. I've got a little magnet attached up there and you can already see that the front display is working again. If we if we go to power this guy on, let's see if the front display still stays on. Got the logo on the back of the front. Again, it's not on. Let's see. Maybe it'll come on when it comes on. Okay, yeah. Okay, the front is on. All right, so we get an image on the front, image on the back when it's charging. Now it only shows an image on the front, which it should do while it's open. Once I close it, it freaks out. So I think we might just have a case of there's something going on with this display. Oh, it's hard to say. All right, we got an image on the front. Again, turning it on. Got an image on the back. It's staying on in the front. Staying on in the back. Okay, front's on. Front is working. Back is not. And this is where the issue is occurring. Still probably when I go to close it, it shuts off. If I reopen it, it should automatically come back on, but it's not. I think the phone has also shut down. I hold down the power button, it turns back on. So it it's definitely shutting off. I wonder if we go into thermal camera, if I close it, if we're gonna see a spike in power going somewhere. Maybe there's something that is causing it more than just the display. Oh man, that's frustrating, because it's working just fine right as it is right now. I fold it nice and slowly, and right there, shorts out. So after everything I've done to try to figure this out, I finally think I know what it is. I think it is the flex cable that connects the display to the charge port, to the batteries, to the main board. That flex cable, I believe that over time, something has caused it to get damaged and only in a very specific position does it want to work. And as soon as you bend it, you lose some form of continuity on some of the traces inside the flex and it causes a short, basically causing the phone to power off instantly and only come back on if it's in the right position and things like that. So to prove this theory, let's connect up a new display flex and see if that fixes it. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we've got ourselves a new flux cable. We'll get this out and we're going to test it. So disconnect the batteries. We need to remove the charge port daughter board here. And then what we'll need to do is connect, connect the charge port back here. And then we'll plug it into the phone again. All right, we'll push that on down and we'll connect up the display. And then up here at the top, we'll disconnect the old one, hold it down and let's connect up here, the new flex. All right, we'll connect up the battery as well. All right, now let's see when we connect the back, if we can get this guy to turn on. All right, moment of truth, hold down the power button. We get the Samsung logos, which is perfect. Now let's see if when we get it all the way on and bend it, if we have that same issue. Okay. So we would typically lose, it would typically black out right around there. And nope, it hasn't blacked out. If we close it all the way, the back panel comes on. And right when we open it back up, you can see, you see it's off, open it and it's back on. So we have now finally diagnosed the issue. In tomorrow's video, I'm gonna show you how we fix it. All right, so you've seen that the Flex cable solves the issue. Now comes the bigger issue, which is how do you replace a cable that dives down inside the frame? And I'm gonna show you, but you'll have to wait till tomorrow as I know that that's gonna be a crazy repair. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you tomorrow for another video.